the the seventies, then the eighties. I was at Saturday Night Live, and then I was at um, doing Palladium and some other stuff. And then by the nineties, I was doing TV a lot. Wow. So so, what did you? What was your audition like for Saturday Night Live? I didn't audition. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, I was recommended. There was a guy from the original show, um, uh, Mr. Mike. Mm. Michael O'Donohue. And he was really one of the most brilliant, perverse National Lampoon, National Lampoon writers. He's the guy that did the cover with the gun to the head of the dog. Yeah. You know, or buy this, buy this um, issue or we'll kill the dog. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> he was brilliant and he was genuine, genuinely weird. And um, he had, quote, discovered me as a video artist. Mm. And he put a couple of my more perverse pieces or seemingly perverse because I'm actually very pure. Yeah. But they, but my work seems to be perverse at certain right. points. And um, one was a dancing belly button, which was, <laughs> I had figured out that if you pressed your, your naked belly against a plexiglass wall and you wiggled your butt, that your belly button would move. Nice. And I played an Irish jig while I did that. Oh, cool. So that was fun. And there were a couple of others. Anyway, um, that show was supposed to be an SNL replacement uh, when Lauren was going to quit. Mm. And then, uh, but it was almost just designed fatally to be rejected by the censors. I mean, that's that's what Michael's thing was. And, yeah. uh, and so it got uh, rejected. But anyway, so Michael ended up recommending me to the next year of the show. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't even write sketches. I don't, I don't really, I mean, at that time, I couldn't even pretend to write a joke. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I don't really write jokes anyway. I don't even know what jokes, are. I think jokes are like, something everybody agrees on is a joke. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't really get it. I mean, but I did do weird things and, and have weird ideas. So there was and, room on the SNL roster for just, interesting weird people not really really no it was a mistake oh okay <laughs> <laughs> what happened well here's the deal at that if you think about before i got there snl when it started was two threads it was this parody basimatic kind of mm -hmm. you know uh lampoon kind of parody uh, which I find less interesting, but anyway, mm -hmm. th that was one. And then there was this very weird Guido Sarducci thing and various, and O'Donohue and these weird things that were just in there mixed with it all, you know? And I was in that other vein. That vein got eventually taken over by Letterman, basically. Right. I mean, Letterman, when it started, did all that on the street stuff, all the weird, clever stuff. And SNL became mostly parody, you know? Mm. And, and then, so that was, yeah. Yeah. How, and how long did you, I think you spent a year at SNR. Or how long did you spend there? No, I didn't make it that long. Oh, you didn't make I was it fired. <laughs> <laughs> I was fired. I, I did, I appeared in at least two or three sketches. Right. I wrote tons of sketches they never put on. Like I wanted to do, you know, who's watching now and go out mm -hmm. with a camera crew and find somebody actually watching the show while they were watching it and yeah. we were doing it. Um, they didn't let me do that. And I wanted to do a tribute. I wanted to do a, a, a biography of Topo Gigio or mm. a documentary of Topo Gigio. Anyway, I was in, a, I had a lot of great ideas, but they didn't want to do any of them. And I, one sketch I did actually write, got on kind of the night I got, I think it was the night that I got fired. Um, it was on, it was called Dying to be Heard. It was like women poets reading their poetry and then offing themselves. Mm. Um, and then the a panel would vote on them and that was really bizarre wow. and uh what else did i do i think that's i was in a oh i made three films three short there were videos they were actually video the first digital films mm, the for, digital uh, shorts SNL. that they do yeah yeah but that's uh, crazy. it was like it, i knew i was going to get fired it was a classic office situation you know where and listen you have to understand i really wanted to quit oh okay but my lawyer explained to me you can't quit in showbiz yeah, because you're making a contract to do something. And if you quit, you're breaching contract and you have to give them back all the money. 
But if they fire you, you get all the money. Ah. So I had to stay in there, even though everybody had it's it, it's, it's like that classic thing where you know everybody stops talking to you in an office. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know you're going to get fired. <laughs> and the guy that was your pal doesn't want to be seen with you anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And it was a terrible year for the show. I had great reviews. I'm not joking. I mean, it, you can see it historically. I can prove it. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, there would be these reviews where they literally said uh, Tom Shales and Marvin Kipman, who were the big critics of the day, had these two quotes about me. One was, uh, he's like a grasshopper among worms. <laughs> Oh. Another one was, uh, he's a scholar among morons. Wow. This did not endear me to the rest of the <laughs> cast. And I'll Ooh. never forget, no less than Joe Piscopo. Yeah. Like, you know, was sitting behind me one time when the, the producer of the show read out loud these reviews. And I, you know, I got yeah. well reviewed. And he said, I didn't hear anybody laughing at that. You know? <laughs> Who, so not, I so, that was pretty good. So got, not, who else was on the? Joe that's right. Who else was on the cast at that point? Who, there were, who, it was not a stellar. Yeah. Cast. I mean, what it was known for the biggest thing really was that Eddie Murphy was a uh, when I was a um, what do you call it? featured performer or whatever mm -hmm. they used to call. It. Uh, he was. Oh, okay. And he was a little more successful than I. Yeah, was. just so. <laughs> No, he knew what he was doing. I have to say, that guy, he was a kid. Yeah. Okay, he was, I was older than him. He, I was a kid, but he was a kid. And to me, and he, he knew exactly how to play it and right. exactly what to do. I was, I mean, not, he was also good, but I was really impressed with how he maneuvered. It's a, it was a hard environment. Right. And how old were you at this time? Say what? How old were you at the time? That's a really good question. Um, I know how old I, I can. I know when I was born. So yeah. let's see. Um, twenty eight. Wow. Yeah, was Murphy was like nineteen or something like that. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, man. Yeah. And then they say, yeah, the work the work environment is pretty chaotic and and it's almost iconic for being toxic. Yeah, it's yeah. it's well. I have a good analysis of it. Basically, you know, I've I've been at a lot of. Um, of of uh, one of the really stellar environments where things started, right? Uh, SNL, I was there after it started. Mm -hmm. um, Nickelodeon, I was there when it really started. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's some other places I've been where I've been lucky enough to be in the moment, right? Right. And I used to think I'd never be in the moment. I always felt I was at the end of the moment. Yeah. <laughs> so I wrote at the National Lampoon too, and I felt like, oh, it's already over. You know, mm -hmm. I'm at the last. But SNL, just for that, along those lines, SNL really was formed, its character and environment was formed in the beginning with Lauren and O'Donohue and all these writers and, and Chevy Chase, all these people. And they were extremely competitive and predatory. And they were driven by it. It was stimulated. They made great work because of mm -hmm. it, you know? And they were also friends, which I think is an important part of even the most vicious comedy works if the people are friends right and there's some affection underlying even if they're like mad at each other or whatever it just means there's something gluing them together because mm -hmm. otherwise why would they be together to me right so the interesting thing was that when those guys left somehow the environment was set regardless <laughs> yeah. so now we we're all strangers but we were kind of pitted against each other and that was the idea and i felt it was just not worth it and then the whole stay up late yeah, and get high. yeah. let's get high and stay up late and write a funny sketch yeah. i was like leave me alone i'm high <laughs> you know it's like if i'm high i don't want to work yeah let's work now no, no you know yeah. 